Okay, now, actually, current is taken as a basic quantity. And uh, if you remember the list of basic quantities that we did as first topic in physics, so we had a current ko basic quantity ki list. Mein rakha tha. Charge, which should be more basic quantity than current, is defined as product of current and time. Apparently, apparently, charge seems like more basic quantity. Lekin, yahan pe dekhen. If you define current, agar ko, 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 to define current and you say the current is one second. If somebody defines current as charge divided by time, then it will be long. You can use current equals to charge divided by time as a formula, but you can never use current equals to charge divided by time as a as a definition. It's not a definition. It is a very good formula to cal calculate current, but it's not a definition because basic quantities cannot be defined. If somebody asks you to define charge, the basic definition of charge is it is current multiplied by time. Unit of current is ampere. Unit of time is second. Unit of charge is ampere second, which is also known as coulomb. Charges are generally of two types. There are two types of charges, positive charge and negative charge. If we talk about charged particles, we have charged particles which are positive. We have charged particles which are negative. For example, protons, alpha particles, nuclei. They are all positively charged particles. Electrons, There can be negative ions. So negative charge particles and positive charge particles. These are the two types of charge particles we have. Now, current is defined as direction, or uh, I should not say current is defined. Direction of current is defined as direction of motion of positive charge define current. Current is a basic quantity, but I can define direction of current. Direction of current is defined as direction of motion of positive charge. If we talk about charged particles moving in space, they can be protons or electrons or alpha particles. Oh, sorry, did I say electron? Just, just don't. Just, never mind. Uh, when we talk, talk about charged particles moving in space, they can be protons, alpha particles, or any nuclei. And it can also be electrons and ions, positive charge particles or negative charge particles. In space, they both can move. But in conductors, only electrons can move. So when we will be talking about current in a conductor, which will be the most common thing in the topic that we are about to start, current will be moving inside a conductor. So in that case, there will be two different things that we have to consider. Whether we are asked for the direction of electrons or we had asked for the direction of current. When we draw the battery, the bigger terminal is positive, smaller terminal is negative. Electrons are like negative terminal is rich with electrons. So what happens is electrons come out of the negative terminal. They go into the lamp. And then they come out of the lamp and they go back to the battery. So this blue cycle, is telling you the direction of electrons. But if somebody asks you to define direction of current or explain direction of current in this blue, what is the direction of current? Remember, direction of current will be from positive to negative, which is shown by the red arrows over here. These red arrows, they are showing direction of electrons. This is known as conventional current, direction of conventional current. So if positive charge is going in a certain direction, 
current will be along the direction of the positive charge. But if current is going opposite to the direction, uh, like if, if charge is negative, which is moving in a certain direction, current will be considered opposite to that direction. Electric potential. Another quantity that will be grinding on in the whole topic. What is electric potential? Electric potential is defined as electrical energy per unit charge. Electrical energy per unit charge. Symbolically, electric potential is represented with V. Energy is E, charge is Q. So, unit for electric potential will be joules per coulomb. Joules per coulomb are also known as volt, a very well-known quantity. Volt. What is meant by one volt? If energy of one joule is carried by one coulomb of charge, it means there is a, there is a voltage of one volt. Energy of one joule carried by one coulomb of charge. These are the common examples of, of energies that we see around. Household electricity, 220 volt. Car battery, 12 volt. The cell that we put in remote control, 1.5 volt. So what is meant by 220 volt? If I household electricity is 220 volt, it means what? It means This means every single coulomb of charge carries 220 joule of energy. Now, let's see, there, there are more concepts over here. There are two electric appliances that we are comparing. Uh, an air conditioner, AC, versus energy saver. So we have AC, which is rated as 2,200 watt, energy saver is 22 watt. AC is rated as 220 watt, means what? It, it needs 2,200 joule of energy in every second. Each coulomb of charge carries 220 joule of energy. So how many, how many coulombs of charge is required for this AC to work in one second? Like how? many coulombs of charge will fulfill the need that this AC has right now. So AC requires 2,200 joules and each coulomb has 220 joules. So how many such joules are, how, how many such coulombs are required? Answer is 10. So that is why we have to pay more, uh, we have to pay more for, for uh, AC as compared to an energy saver. The reason is AC requires more energy, so more current has to go there to deliver that energy. When more current goes in, we consume more power. More power for more time means more energy, and then we are paying. The, the, the electric companies, they, they charge you for energy. They don't charge you for current because the current that comes in goes out. So they are charging you for energy. So AC requires more energy. Come over here. And now, the, the, the end of the story is that in one second, 10 coulombs are required. It means an, a current of 10 ampere will, will be required by the AC. On the other hand, energy saver required 22 watt. That means 22 joules are required. So, Energy saver consumes 0 0.1 coulomb of charge in one second because one coulomb has 2000, uh, sorry, 220 
joule. So energy saver will take 10 seconds to consume one coulomb of charge. That is why energy saver requires less power or, or consumes less current. Now, the formulas that we have done till now. Number one, charge equals to current multiplied by time. Number two, just one second, let me resize this. Here we go. Now, uh, current equals to charge divided by time or charge equals to current multiplied by time. Electric potential is energy divided by charge. And we can, we can mix these two formulas to get energy voltage equals to E over IT and E equals to VIT. A very useful formula. So all the formulas is, that are in boxes are important. And energy divided by time is power. So power equals to VI. Energy equals to VIT, voltage equals to energy divided by charge, charge equals to current multiplied by time. So these are very important formulas. Now, the next topic that we are studying today is electric resistance. In order to understand the, the word resistance, we have to understand how charges move in conductor. Look at this picture and tell me, what do you see? What do you think this picture is to show? This is the, like, like for, forgive my, my drawing skills, but uh, this is done in the middle of the class. So this is the best I could do. This is some, some, some kid sitting on a bench in a park. Okay. So, so just, just to think about it, uh, uh, not from the drawing, just, just your head. Now, how many of these kids are sitting on the bench? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, six kids are sitting on the bench. Now, this is the kid who was uh, in, in the parking lot. He got played, so he comes here. And this one says, let me sit. But there is no more space. I hope you can see that there is no space to sit. There are already six, room for six students on the bench and all six are sitting. So what happens is this kid, Let's call him X. What he does, he he's anyways, he sits on this side and then pushes everybody forward. Okay. So he sits that side and pushes everybody forward. And remember, there's only space for six students on the bench. What will happen to the last person? He will fall over. He will fall down. So this will get up run back, get to this milkshake shop. He, he will ask for the milkshake. And then after consuming milkshake, he will come running here and will say the same thing. Let me sit. but there is no space for, for uh, another person. But he will sit anyway. Don't you think it, it will be a continuous game now? A person will sit on that side, slide everybody forward, make the person fall down. This person will get up, go back, take a shot of milk sh milkshake over there and come and ask for the same thing. Although, I hope you understand that this is Never going to happen. This is not how things happen. But this is just an example to understand a certain kind of motion. 
how charges move in conductor. Now let's consider these kids are wearing uh, silky pants and they they are sitting on a very smooth polish bench. Will this game be easy to play? Answer is yes. They are very smooth cloth and they, they, they are sitting on a very smooth bench. The game will be pretty easy to play. Like everybody can easily push everybody forward. The last person will fall down. He will run back, take a milkshake, come back and, and keep pushing everybody forward. And this game can easily be played. Now imagine there is a there is a bench made up of concrete, and everybody is wearing rough jeans pants. What will happen now? This game will become difficult because jeans pants have more trick. Concrete bench is more more rough, so there will be more friction. So the game will become difficult. Okay, now if you completely understand the game and you completely think or, or, or just imagine what is happening over there, I can use that to, to tell you a concept over here. How electrons move in a conductor. Electrons don't swim in a conductor. They drift. Electrons drift. This kind of motion that these kids are having on the bench is called drift. In some materials, it is very easy for electrons to drift. In some materials, it is very difficult for electrons to drift. When we say, when we say copper is a good conductor, it does not mean that copper has some extra electrons over there. And, and sometimes when we say free electron, um, a misconcept is some, some people think that free electron means electrons that not have any nucleus. They don't belong to nucleus. That's why they are free. No. Free electrons mean electrons that can easily slip. When we say something is good conductor, it does not mean it has extra electrons. It only means that its electrons can easily slip. That's why we call them free electrons. Okay. So free electron does not mean elect extra electron. It means electrons that can easily drift. There are electrons in wood. There are electrons in plastic. There are electrons in rubber. There are electrons in cotton. Why are these things not good conductors? Not because there are no electrons. The answer is there is, there is more resistance. It is not easy for those electrons to drift. That's why those materials offer more resistance. Resistance is a property that depends on number one, nature of material. Number two, how long the conductor is. Number three, how wide and thick the conductor is. Number four, what is the temperature of the conductor? Okay, let's start with the first one. Nature of material. When we say nature of material, what do we mean? Nature of material means how many, number one, how many free electrons are there? Number two, how free are those electrons? How many free electrons? And what is the degree of their freedom? How free are they? How easily they can slip, how easily they can just move forward? Okay, now, let me explain how electrons move in a conductor. Let's see, let me take a piece of this conductor. This is a conductor in a circuit. This is conductor. Now this conductor is already filled with electrons. This is filled with electrons. 
so what if one extra electron is pushed in the last electron will move out it is not the same electron that comes out the electron comes out will be different because all of the electrons will have a push forward so the last electron comes out at the exact same time so see this this battery push is an electron from here so this whole conductor i'm talking about this part of the conductor this part of the conductor already has electrons in it talking about this right part of the circuit this right part of the circuit is made up of conductor this conductor already has an electron so when when one electron is pushed in by the battery all of the electrons they get one push forward and the last electron will go into the lamp over here okay it is not the same electron that was delivered by the battery battery just pushed one electron in because all electrons are in the same chain and and when electron comes in the last electron goes into the lamp with the lamp is also a conductor so what happens is lamp converts that electrical energy into electrical energy is converted into light energy here and heat energy and the last electron with no energy pushed into this conductor all of the electrons feel a forward force and at the same time the delivered an electron out one electron comes in so there are no extra electrons in that is transferring current in in a conductor electrons are already there even if if i cut a piece of this conductor for example i cut this piece of a conductor while there was current passing through the circuit i cut a piece of a conductor and then check are there any extra electrons in this piece it was conducting electrons the answer is when conductor is conducting electrons or when conductor is conducting electricity there are there is no extra, there are no extra electrons on the conductor conductor always has the same electron as there are so electrons stay the same it is just the electrons are having a forward push that keeps on pushing all the electrons into the circuit okay now factors that affect resistance of a conductor number 1 nature of material nature of material there are multiple things in nature number 1 resistivity resistivity is the resistance into cross sectional area divided by length it helps us to understand uh how much resistance that conductor will offer if we make it like resistivity is a standard for different materials as resistance belongs to appliances or or single components of a circuit like a resistor can have a resistance or a lamp can have a resistance or a buzzer can have a resistance even batteries can have resistances so resistance is re related to single appliances whereas resistivity means nature of resistance of a material okay so resistivity will be the resistance multiplied by cross sectional area divided by length material with high resistivity have more resistance another factor that affect or, or depends on nature of material is resistance depends on number density what is number density number density is the 
then when word number density number density is number of free electrons divided by volume number density is represented by small number number is represented by capital number divided by volume number has no unit volume is meter uh, sorry volume is meter cube so what will be unit for number density number has no unit so it will be per meter cube meter cube is negative sign Number density was explained over there as well. Okay, that was where the B was. I thought I missed B. So this, these are the reason for different materials to have different resistances. Number one, the resistivity of material. Number two, number density of material. Materials with high number density are good conductors or, or better conductors of electricity. If, are, if you have two materials and you want to see which one is better than the other one, Excuse me. Which one is better than the other one? What you do is you take the same volume of both of the materials and then count how many free electrons are there. The material that has more free electrons per unit volume is a better conductor of electricity. Now, length of conductor. How do you think length of conductor will affect? I, I think we can understand it with the form with the example that we did over here. What if instead of six students, there are 10 students on a longer bench? Will this game be easy to play or more difficult to play? Answer is more difficult to play. Why it will be more difficult to play? Because uh, there will be more students in the same line. They will have, their, their frictions will add up. So more energy will be required to flip everybody forward and make the last person fall over. So more land, more resistance. Now. How do you think resistance and cross sectional area are proportional to one another? Resistance is inversely proportional to area. Bigger the area is, smaller will be the resistance. That is why if you are installing an, uh, installing an AC, AC requires more current, so you will offer as least resistance as possible. So you will try to make wires as thick as possible. Resistance and area are inversely proportional. So if you need more current, you need less resistance. So what you do is you make wires thicker. So they offer less resistance and more current can pass. Confusion? Anyone? Loves. 